Welcome to Jackie's Craft Table. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining me today. I have some fabulous products to show you. Arteza sent me a set of their 120 count Everblend art markers. So let's start off by unboxing these markers and see what they look like. I do love alcohol markers. I have a set of Copic markers that I've been slowly collecting over the years, but I was very excited to try these out. They come in a really nice case. The set is kind of heavy, but you have this nice handle and a shoulder strap to carry them around with. I've already carried mine to work and played with them on my lunch break. It's really fabulous. Let me take this wrapper off. These little cards here show all of the markers that's included. I use this to help me make my own swatch sheet. I always like to swatch out my new art mediums just to become familiar with them and then to have a chart when I'm choosing markers for my various projects. The bag has these nice clips on it as well as Velcro, so your markers aren't going to go anywhere. So here's the beautiful set. You can get these in smaller sets as well if you prefer. The sides are also Velcroed, so you can really open up this case to access the markers. And then they have these elastic bands to hold the markers in place. Very nice, and there's room for more markers or pencils or whatever you want to put in there. They also sent two packs of their replaceable tips. They sent the medium chisel tip as well as the fine tip. So if you wear out one of your tips, you have these nice replacements. I'm going to show you how they work. They're very easy. I'm going to start with one of the chisel tips. I put a piece of tight paper down to protect my work surface. And these are nice resealable little baggies. You'll need some tweezers and get a good grip on the tip. And it takes some elbow grease, but that's good. You don't want these flopping out. <laughs> so I just jiggle it back and forth very slowly and gently until I can remove the whole tip. And then I can replace it with the new one. On the packaging, it says to wait for a few minutes. And it probably took about five minutes to get the ink to flow into this chisel tip. And then once the tip is fully saturated, you're good to go. The chisel tips on these Everblend markers are a bit larger than the chisel tips on the Copics, and I liked the size of these. I want to show you my swatch charts. I went in the same order as the ones that came with the markers. I swatched them out on Nina 110 pound cardstock. Look at how beautiful and vibrant these colors were. They're just gorgeous. I also swatched them out on some Nina Desert Storm cardstock. This is like a craft cardstock, but a little bit smoother and paler. If you've never tried your alcohol markers on this Desert Storm cardstock, I highly recommend giving it a try. It is so much fun. For my cards today, I'm using this darling stamp set from Stampers Anonymous called Funny Farm. And I'm going to stamp up several of the images, first on the white cardstock. I masked off the sentiment because I wanted to put the sentiment somewhere else on the card. So I just masked it off with a piece of washi tape and stamped up my little pig. And then next I'm going to stamp it onto a piece of the Desert Storm cardstock. These are nice rubber stamps. So if you're going to use your mini Misty, just make sure to take out the foam piece inside. And then they stamp out just beautifully. So I'm going to put some ground under my little pig first. I want it to be a kind of a dark, muddy brown. 
I will have all of the colors I used on these cards listed over on my blog at jackiescrafttable.com. I use the chisel tip to color in these backgrounds, and it's a nice broad chisel tip, so it's easy to lay down the color. I'm laying down a lot of ink so that it will blend in the fibers of the paper and give me a nice smooth blend. You won't see any of the marker streaks after it dries. And now for the sky behind my little pig. I had a lot of fun playing with these markers and choosing which ones to use with these little animals. Next, I'm going to do the same thing with the craft cardstock. And this dark brown goes on very similar on this paper as with the white cardstock. But you'll see as I use other colors that the paper kind of desaturates the colors. And it's just a fun, antique, almost faded look. I really love how they turned out. And now for the sky. And as you see, the chisel tip is fabulous because I can just trace all around my little pig so easily. I tried not to go over and over the lines next to my pig. As with all alcohol markers, these will bleed if you put too much ink down near your stamped image. So I tried just to go around my pig once, and then I can put as much ink as I want to around him just to get a nice smooth blend. Now I'm going with an even darker blue. And these two blues really blend together beautifully. But don't be afraid to use your ink. These markers aren't refillable. However, you can purchase them open stock. They come in packs of four. So you'll have plenty of markers in the colors that you need, or you could share them with friends. So I'm just trying to stay within my little circle. And I go back and forth between these two blues to get a nice blend. Also, like any other alcohol marker, they're going to bleed through the back side. When I'm done coloring in the background behind this pig, the paper is really wet and saturated. However, when it dries, it dries down flat again. And I do allow it to dry before I start painting my pig so that the colors don't bleed together. You could even use your heat tool to dry your panels. So I'm going to set that one aside to dry and color in the background behind my pig on my Desert Storm cardstock. As you can see, it's just a pretty desaturated look to it. Once the Desert Storm panel has dried, the colors will be a little bit brighter. Now that the paper's dry, I can start coloring in my pigs. I'm going to saturate the paper with my lightest color first, and then I go in with a darker color to add shadows. So putting down your lightest color first helps the darker color to blend into it. So with these markers, I start with my lightest color first, and then I just work my way through the markers until I get to my darkest. And then I go back to darkest to lightest, and this just gives you a nice smooth blend. I really love working with the fine tip on these markers. The Copic markers have the brush nibs, which are nice and soft and bouncy, but they're big, and sometimes I have a really hard time getting into tight corners with them. But with these markers, you can get into really small areas and not bleed over your lines. You can purchase bullet tips for your Copic markers and change out either side with a smaller tip, but I didn't want to invest in that expense. These Everblend markers have a really great price point, and I highly recommend them. You can also get a set of skin tones and gray tones, and those are both sets of 36. After my coloring is done, I'm using a white gel pen to brighten up the little flowers in this scene. I'm using plain card stocks to frame my little piggy portraits. 
And now for my sentiments. I'm using gray cardstock for this. And I decide to use a post-it note this time just to cover up the piggy. I'm using my anti-static powder on my paper. And now I can ink up the sentiment with some embossing ink from Hero Arts. I'm going to heat emboss it with some white embossing powder. And I will melt this with my heat tool. And then I can just flip over the paper and stamp it out again for both cards. I cut out my sentiments and fishtailed one end. And now I'm just adhering those down flat onto the front of my card. I already attached both of these to a white card base. And then I thought it needed a little something more. So I pulled out my stash of enamel dots. I chose some teal enamel dots for this card. Kind of matches the sky behind the pig. I just placed them on the card gently to make sure I liked where they were. And then once I'm ready to commit, I can press them in place. For this second card, I'm going to use some gray enamel dots. And here's a look at these first two cards. I don't know which one I like better. The desaturated one is really fun. For my next two cards, I chose this cute horse with the spots. And I'm just marking in where I want the ground to be. Then I change to the chisel nib and color that in. I went ahead and stamped the sentiment that was attached to this stamp. And the background is going to be some pretty purples. I'm going to speed this up. The coloring on these backgrounds go pretty fast, but I try to put down enough color so that the alcohol inks can blend within the fibers of the paper. And now for the Desert Storm cardstock. And this is really muted on this cardstock, but you can still tell that it's purple, especially when it dries back. The horse I'm going to color in with some grays. I'm just putting down my first color a really pale gray. And then I'm coming in with a medium tone gray. And then I can put down even a darker gray in the shadows. The background was so colorful, I didn't want to put too much color on the horse. And then I'm putting some little pink cheeks on the horse. On the Desert Storm cardstock, you could, of course, choose darker colors to color in the horse. But I was trying just to use the same colors I used on the white cardstock. And it ended up looking pretty cute, I thought. I'm going to put a little bit of ground beneath them. I'm going to frame these horses with a faux wood frame. And then I'm going to adhere both horses onto this beautiful purple cardstock. But I did want to prop them up with some more foam tape. I like the little bit of dimension that this foam tape gives. And then I can attach it to a white card base. I just love the images of all of these cute stamps. The next one I'm coloring in is this cute little dog. The color I'm putting under this dog is called Green Tea. The names they have for their markers are just cute. But I really liked this color. And then I'm going to use some yellows for the sky behind him. I'm starting with my lightest yellow first. Again, putting a lot of the alcohol marker down. And then my darkest color at the top. 
And then I'm blending back and forth between these two colors to get a nice blend. And now for the Desert Storm paper. I want the ground to be very distinct. So I'm just swiping the yellow marker next to the green one. And again, I'm allowing the background to dry before I start coloring in the critters. I'm putting down my lightest tone again, and this is peach. I had a lot of fun playing with these markers and choosing which colors to put together. And again, I'll have all of the colors I use listed over on my blog. And then I'm putting in my medium brown. I'm blending those two together. And then I'm going to come in with a darker brown, just for the darkest shadows. And these three colors blend really well together. I thought that the triangular shape of these markers felt really good in my hands, and they don't roll away when you set them down, which is nice. I thought it would be really fun to make a whole set of cards using these images that make them really clean and simple. You wouldn't even have to color in a background, but just color in the image and leave a lot of white space on your card. Maybe just dress it up with some twine. I really love the sentiments that they paired with these animals too, especially this dog stamp. The sentiment says, I rough you. It would be really fun to send out some cards like this to some of the dog lovers in my life. I just wish that they had included a cat in this set. I would have loved to have seen a cat image in this style. Now that that one's done, I'm going to carry on with the Desert Storm cardstock card. After I finish coloring my dogs, I use a black jelly roll pen to dot their eyes, just to bring more life to their eyes. It makes a big difference, I think. I was going to restamp my images after I had finished coloring them. It just helps to crisp up the lines, but I never managed to remember after I was done. But if you can remember to do that, it makes a big difference. It's also really fun to stamp out floral images on your Desert Storm cardstock and color them in with your alcohol markers. I did that in another video, and I will link to that at the end of this video. However, florals, I think, look good in any medium. I masked off the sentiment again because I wanted to put it somewhere else on the card. Next, I thought that these cards needed some hearts because the sentiment says, I rough you. So I'm coloring in the cardstocks with a tomato red Everblend marker, and I die cut the little hearts and attached them to the card. I also attached just a white one next to the sentiment. For my last two cards, I chose the little cow image, and I'm going to put some green colors behind him so it looks like he's out in a pasture. And as you can see, I'm using the fine tip just to get around his udders. <laughs> I'm using a few different green colors to do this. The darkest one is going to be at the bottom, and then the colors get progressively lighter toward the top of the card. The sentiment I stamped with the image. Make sure to use dye ink if you're going to use your alcohol markers. Whenever I use my pigment ink with my alcohol markers, they inevitably smear. So I find that the black dye ink is the best. I'm using Simon Says Stamp Intense Black Ink. And I really like that ink. It stamps out nice and crisp. And it doesn't smear with your Arteza Everblend markers. So I'm blending these two greens together. And then I'm going to come in with a dark cactus green at the very bottom. I just thought it needed another color under there. 
and the greens really showed up well on the craft cardstock. I really loved the look of the green on the craft. And again, don't worry about using too much ink. It's not going to peel up your paper. And once the ink dries, the paper flattens out again. Now I'm pulling out some pinks to color in this cow. I'm coloring his nose the same color. And then I want him to be mostly a white cow. So I'm going to bring in more grays to shade the cow. I'm using some shades of warm gray to do this. And it makes for some very quick coloring when your object is white. Just a little bit of shading is all that's needed. The shading on the craft cardstock didn't show up as well, so I did go over it a few times just to darken it up. It dried back really light. And then for the udder and the nose, I came in with a darker pink, a watermelon pink, because the peaches and cream color just did not show up on the craft cardstock. I'm adding another color of grays to the cow on the white cardstock as well. And then I'm using my Zero Blender pen to blend that out into white. I cut out my images with an oval frame and I'm using some fun foam to prop them up off of the front of my cards. And I'm using some more single color card stocks behind them. I ran out of dot liner in the middle of this, but fortunately I had a refill at hand. It doesn't take long to put that new cartridge in. So here are the last two cards. I did add a few enamel dots on them. So I'd love to hear whether you like the Desert Storm cardstock cards or the white cardstock cards better. <laughs> Let me know in the comments below. Okay, so this was what my desk looked like at the end of creating all of these cards. I had more markers out than not. <laughs> and I just wanted to show you how I put them away. A lot of people complained that the elastics on these bags are too tight but I'm going to show you how I put them away. I just pinch the elastic, kind of pull it forward, and it just slides right in easily. I did open up the case, so I had easier access. I think I am going to store them for now in this case, and I'm hoping that they come out with even more colors. I really love these markers, and I just had a ball using them on my cards. So I do highly recommend them. So thank you very much, Arteza, for sending me these wonderful markers. They also sent me a 10% off coupon code. It's just Jackie's Craft Table 1, and it's the numeral one. And you enter that in when you make a purchase. I have links below as well as over on my blog to all of the products that I used in this video. I hope this video inspired you to sit down and create something wonderful today. Thank you, my crafty friends, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Bye.